there's this thread on 4chan right now which simply says respect your ancestors here look respect them with an image of a bunch of old Nico Nico Doga memes let me tell you why this is the best thread on 4chan right now in this thread someone says too many people on the internet now and that's why it's ruined it was better when it was just the nerds and outcasts from the 90s and 2000s. To which someone replies, What if we created a safe space for nerds and outcasts? Bear with me here. Now someone replies to that, there's a bunch of replies, right? Some of them are good. Someone replies to that, They get invaded and ruined by cultural Marxist parasites. Now bear with me, bear with me. This is gonna turn out to be something good, I promise. In an unrelated post, a few posts down, from the, the cultural Marxist parasites post. Someone says, Rightoids finding out about the internet was a mistake. Devolved this site into endless hysterics over newspeak buzzwords and culture war manufactured outrage. Two posts down from that, someone replies to the cultural Marxists person and the newspeak buzzword rightoids, rightoids person. And this person says this, it's you fucks who ruined the internet and are ruining this thread right now. And then no one posts about politics for the rest of the thread. Those guys actually were able to listen and do some self-reflection. They thought, hold on a minute, you're right. Maybe this isn't the correct place to be talking about politics. You know, 4chan is, it has a politics board. Go over there if you want to talk about that. Maybe they thought that, I don't know. Maybe they just got bored with the thread and left. I don't know, but the point still stands. This thread did not get derailed, even though the Psyopers tried to derail it. No, rather this thread maintained its structure and is instead just a thread full of malaise, regret, disdain for what the internet has become and a desire to go back to when it was good. And the internet was good, I caught the tail end of it, okay? I'm still a little too young to be classified as a true old fag. You know, my, my history with, with 4chan and, and the internet in general was a little strange. I didn't get uh, a laptop with real access to the internet or any computer of my own uh, for a long, long time after the most of my peers did. Uh, when I did, it had a broken Wi-Fi card and a shitty USB dongle. Uh, so I was connecting with uh, terrible, terrible internet speeds, almost like, like dial-up or something uh, for like a while before uh, I got an upgrade. Um, and I was never allowed to use like the family computer, so I didn't actually use the internet until much later than most of my peers. Uh, but once I did, they never managed to get me off of that place. Uh, and with 4chan in particular, again, I can't call myself an old fag because I started using 4chan probably, I, uh, now, the exact date's a little difficult for me to remember because my entire childhood is kind of a blur, but I think around 2014. And when I did, I exclusively went on the board R9K, which uh, was a terrible fucking mistake and did irreparable damage to my brain as a child. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, when it comes to otaku culture, which is really the core of 4chan, I've always been interested in Japanese culture, even when I was a kid. I've talked about this before, but uh, when I went to primary school, there was a group of Japanese kids whose parents had all migrated over here for work. None of them spoke English, they were all really young, and they all hung out with each other and spoke Japanese to each other. And I just thought these guys were cool. You know, they had their own language, they, they had their own sort of special games they played in the playground that were different from ours. And uh, I just thought this group was cool. And so I asked my dad for Japanese lessons. I went to the local library and took out whatever manga I could find, which was uh, the first ever Pokemon manga, the first two or three chapters of the Yu-Gi-Oh manga, and uh, some random scattered disconnected chapters of Bleach. These were the three manga I read as a kid, and I read these out over and over again. I have read these manga like three or four times each uh, because I was so fascinated by it. But I still didn't watch any anime. Well, not really, you know, I, obviously I'd seen the Pokemon anime, Digimon, a little bit of that. Never got into Dragon Ball as a kid, or, or Naruto, or any of the shonen, uh, you know, classics. Uh, just wasn't really my thing. Still not really my thing. Uh, but yeah, I, I'd read a couple of manga, uh, but other than that, I didn't really know that much about the existence of otaku culture. And it wasn't until I started using 4chan that I got introduced to otaku culture, because people were posting anime reaction images, as they tend to do on 4chan. 
And uh, that's what got me into anime, really, is that someone on RNK posted a link to a YouTube playlist of a, uh, a dubbed version of uh, this anime, Chunib Yog Demokoi Gashtai. Uh, this would have been again back in like I, I don't know remember exactly when it was, but Chunib Yog Demokoi Gashtai and I watched that dubbed English YouTube upload of Chunib uh, that night, all the way through. And that's how I got into anime, which was way later than almost everyone else, you know. Uh, the way that I actually ended up using 4chan was that I, I, I went there, you know, back in 2014, um, 2015, and then during the sort of 26, late 2015 to mid-2016, I had become convinced that the reason I didn't have any friends and everyone hated me, which wasn't really true, I was kind of delusional, um, was because I was too weird. And in order to be less weird, I had to stop using 4chan, stop listening to weird music, and become a giga normie. So I banned myself from using 4chan, and I forced myself to listen to like top 40 music, and somehow I thought this would help me. Of course it didn't help me at all, and I end it just made me miserable. Uh, so I ended up going back on 4chan, sort of uh, post-2016 election, and realizing the site had completely changed. Uh, you know, I, it was kind of a day and night difference before and after the 2016 election. Everything was way faster, but all the post quality was way lower. Um, everything had to be about politics now. It was terrible. So I ended up, just like a lot of other people during that era, moving on to 8chan. I was pretty much on 8chan from the moment anyone started caring about it to the moment it died. Um, uh, and more specifically, uh, some of the other alt-chans like Lane-chan. Um, which again is also dead these days, and so we're back, back on 4chan, uh, where we all belong anyway. So reading this thread, you know, I just feel like I caught the tail end of the era that a lot of these people are talking about, and it does make me sad to realise that we're never going to be able to go back to that. This isn't really a video about my personal relationship with some random Chinese basket weaving forum. What I'm particularly interested in is what killed the internet and can we revive it? I mean, the answer is no. We're never going to be able to go back to the days when the internet was good. The standard lefty interpretation of what killed the internet is it was capitalism because they blame that for everything. Companies that needed more profit in order to please their shareholders had to expand uh, and monetize more heavily which led to selling users data and uh, aggressively advertising to normies, the influx of normies uh, then destroyed the internet. However, you will not hear most lefties actually doing a rigorous lefty interpretation, which is that this is digital colonialism, that we autistic people are the uh, original denizens, the indigenous people of the internet, and that this sort of colonial uh, takeover uh, resulted in the thing that colonial takeovers always do, which is the uh, colonial power enforcing their moral principles in order to civilize the savage races that take that took up uh, space where they now reside. <clears throat> so suddenly uh, our culture was under so much more scrutiny and look, I think some of this may have actually had a positive impact. I think some of this scrutiny had a positive impact, but the vast majority of it was very negative. You know, it led to this sort of outrage culture, which uh, we seem to just be stuck in an endless loop of recreating. No one, no one likes it, um, but no one wants to escape it because the more you don't like it, the more outraged you become and the more you feed it. The only way to really escape is to not engage, just like that thread. Tell them to fuck off, it's you people who are ruining the internet, and then ignore. Do not feed the trolls, I thought everyone learned this 10 years ago. It was really, it was, it was a combination of corporate forces who uh, aggressively marketed the internet to normies, the normies themselves who aggressively enforced their social norms and uh, uh, forced everyone onto these platforms that made them comfortable. But even more than that, we need to go a little deeper in our analysis because these sort of corporate forces, how did they ruin the internet? Like in what sense? What happened? What made it like this? Well in part it's because of the way their sites are designed, they're poorly designed uh, in order to maximize sort of the new user experience, uh, usability, they, they aren't designed to gatekeep, uh, which means they aren't designed to uphold post quality because 
you can't have post quality without some form of gatekeeping. Um, if you let anyone post whatever the fuck they want, they're going to post bullshit. This is why you will have noticed that 4chan's post quality uh, had a notable increase once the new capture was implemented. Uh, just having a little bit of an extra step you have to do before you can say anything is going to weed out the lowest common denominator. You know, back in the day, this was just having the technical knowledge to use the internet at all, or uh, the knowledge of how to find websites, but now no one has to find anything, an algorithm provides it all for them, uh, no one has any, you know, the, the entire interaction of posting is, is seamless, which is seen as a good thing, and the sites, they're so easy to navigate, everything is designed to keep you here for as long as possible. This is what ruined the internet, in part. But I've talked about these sort of strictly enforced and adhered to social protocols. Now, normies are really just the pawns in the game here. I don't actually believe that it's entirely their fault. Well, there, it's, a, it's a fault of a certain group of normies. Let me explain. So social media websites, the reason they have such strict censorship protocols is because they're entirely dependent on advertiser funding. Most of their income comes from showing you ads and selling your data to ad companies. So uh, these social media platforms, they don't really have any power at all. They're entirely under the foot, under the heel of ad companies. People always complain, like, oh, these social media companies, they, they do X, X, Y, Y, Z wrong, right? It's all their fault. They have so much power. Big tech doesn't have much power at all. They're entirely uh, leeching off of the power of the advertising companies. The advertising sector is the one with all the power. But those advertising companies, you think they have power? No, no, no. What are they scared of? Okay, if you're just an advertising company, why are you scared? Uh, why, why do you have to censor so hardly? Sure, some of it might be your personal preferences of what you want your brand to be associated and not associated with, but why? Why does it matter if your brand is associated with something that you don't particularly like? If it means, you know, why does it matter if your goal is just to sell products? The answer is the press. The press is the one with all the power. The press can run a hit piece on your advertising company or whatever. They can run a hit piece saying, look, Coca-Cola ads running next to racist content, this is bad. And that will actually reach a bunch of people, because if one person is served an ad next to something racist or whatever, they're probably not going to care. They were already looking for something racist, right? Uh, but if the press, the media, the, is going to suddenly blow this story up and show, like, look, look everyone, look at this terrible thing that's happening. Now that's a bad look for your brand, and advertisers know this. So even the advertisers aren't really the ones with the power. The social media companies are dependent on the advertisers for revenue, but the advertisers are dependent on the press for revenue, because advertising is all about perception, and who controls perception? The press, the media. So it's really legacy media, the mainstream media that has destroyed the internet, because these are the people that have the power to um, tell advertising companies what is and isn't acceptable, you know, you don't get an article written about your thing unless you did something really good or really bad in the press's eyes. They get to set the standard of what is good and what is bad. They're the sort of moral sense makers of the world. Um, and then those companies, you know, downwind, pull out of social media companies because, and the social media companies just have no choice but to bow to their demands. So, who really killed the internet? is the people that we thought the internet was going to kill. The old school mainstream media. These are the people that actually hold all the power. This is the real systemic analysis. It's digital colonialism enforced by the media. Now underneath the spectacle is the reality that the spectacle conceals. Everything going into this has at least the tacit consent of the powers actually running this shit show. We think of celebrities as the rich and powerful, which is usually wrong. Even they are way closer to us than to actual power. This network constitutes Debord's reality, true production. Who owns what and seduces all the attention from the rest of it? Down here you have the power to, let's see, uh, overthrow governments, to handpick politicians or entire parties. Those which write the laws they follow and we follow. Ultimately, they construct the world that the rest of us just live in, contentedly unconscious and talking about this all day. 
I just want to say that when I talk about censorship, I'm not just talking about people saying naughty words. The biggest form of censorship on the internet is the censorship of culture. Uh, we currently live in uh, the very beginnings of a post-scarcity sort of Star Trek society, right? You know, in Star Trek, nothing is scarce anymore. Everything is in abundance. And right now, we have just progressed far enough that the very, very beginnings of post-scarcity have started to happen, specifically in the sphere of culture. Culture is no longer scarce because culture can be digitally distributed. You can digitally distribute art, movies, music, all the things that make up culture for free without, you know, any cost of copying and sharing or anything like this. Now, those uh, sort of layer underneath the spectacle, you know, these uh, media companies, those are the people that profit entirely by owning culture. When culture is no longer scarce, owning it no longer becomes valuable. And so they enforce their censorship in the form of copyright laws, which they have a big hand in writing. Uh, and, you know, this is a much bigger problem than censoring something because it has a naughty word in it or something like that. Not to say that that isn't also a problem. The whole point is that these people want to control all of culture. Uh, I also want to clarify that I'm not just talking about, you know, uh, like some sort of right-wing conspiracy theory where, uh, you know, certain facts are being censored by the, the radical lefties in media or anything like that. No, no, no. This uh, you, Fox News is as much a part of the mainstream media as, uh, you know, Vox is. They're, they're both the same thing. They're, none of them have any opinions. Uh, they're just there to make money. They just control the production of culture. So what can we do? We can't save the internet, but you can save yourself. Okay, the first thing to do is exit, just leave. Okay, you don't need to be on uh, on Twitter, on, on uh, Instagram, on TikTok, on any of these places, okay? Uh, and I don't wanna hear about TikTok being this exceptionally bad platform, okay? They're all fucking bad, you need to leave. These are all like Skinner boxes. You know, these companies, they, they hire uh, experts in the fields of behavioral science and psychology in droves, okay? These, these fields are some of the highest paying fields because these social media companies, big tech companies, uh, which are obviously ultimately controlled by uh, the uh, those who want to own own culture, right? As I as I've explained, they they're hiring them and they're paying them a, a huge amount of money to manipulate you, uh, because they're digital drug dealers. They're trying to get you addicted to digital cocaine, and all the people who serve them are the sort of street dealers who are uh, who are keeping you hooked. Okay, and look, okay, there's nothing wrong with doing a bit of cocaine once in a while. If you if you want to get high once in a while and you can be responsible, hey, look, do whatever you want. Okay, but but are you being responsible? Like, are you really being a, a practicing proper harm reduction practices? Okay, like, let's be real. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of, uh, of fun once in a while. Uh, but these people, they don't want you to have a little bit of fun once in a while. They want to get you hooked. They, they don't care if it does damage to you as long as it makes you, as long as it makes them money. Uh, you know, so stop handing over your cash. Uh, you're essentially selling your body. You're, you know, you're, sen you're selling the body of your digital double. Uh, to these corporations in return for dopamine, digital cocaine. You, that doesn't sound like a good exchange to me, right? You're not really getting a, a lot of value out of that exchange. Um, so you should probably leave. And the way you can do this is by migrating from platforms to protocols, okay? So rather than using the platform of Discord, you can use the protocol of Matrix or IRC or something like that. Rather than using the platform of Netflix, you can use the BitTorrent protocol, you know, rather than using uh, the, you know, there's a, there's a million examples of this, right? You, you, platforms are corporate controlled. They're, they're owned by some sort of guy who doesn't give a fuck about you, who's making billions off of your uh, digital double existing and selling it, right? You're, you're being exploited uh, by these, these, these uh, platforms, right? And these platforms, they don't make money like capitalism, right? You know, traditionally, the way capitalism works is that you can, uh, you don't have to give any business your business, right? You don't have to give any firm your business. You can choose to, to vote with your wallet and, and not participate. Uh, you you know, you, whereas in this situation, you're not even giving them money, right? They're, you're the product, they're making money off of you, but they don't give you any money in return. They just pay you in, in dopamine hits which, uh, you know, just keep you hooked. 
uh, you're essentially uh, sort of a slave to them. Uh, you know, obviously, that's not a good relationship. Uh, so yeah, I implore you to use Adblock and harden your web browsers and use Linux and all of these sorts of things so that you're not propping them up. But in the end, that's not really making that much of a big difference because you're not their target demographic, right? Normies are, and normies don't give a fuck. Uh, so just leave. Let them have their shitty world. Let them be. In, let them enslave themselves, okay? And you just don't have to interact with them. No one likes them anyway. Uh, you know, move over from from these sorts of things over to protocols, which are collectively sort of owned. You know, you, you no one owns uh, email, right? That no one owns uh, Gemini or IRC or any of these things. You can post whatever you want on there, right? Um, you can you can do with it whatever you want. They're open source. They're free. They're they're great. They do have a problem though. The problem is uh, reach and discoverability. Uh, so it's really hard to to reach a large audience on these platforms uh, or on these protocols because they're just not that commonly used. It's a side effect. You went there to absorb. It's it's strange that people complain about this. You know, you went there to avoid normies, and now you're freaking out that there's no one here. I'm sorry to tell you, but most people are normies. The the web wasn't all you you you've you've been mind poisoned by these uh, curated feeds with infinite scroll and so on. Uh, you know, in reality. Uh, the, in, the empty internet theory is kind of real, right? There really aren't that many people online. Most of these things you see are like big corporate accounts that are run by farms of people or sometimes just bots. You know, the amount of actual active users who are real people that have actually valuable things to say has always been low. And then when you add on top of that, the technical know-how in order to access these protocols and the desire to do so anyway, because you know, good posters, you know, maybe they just don't want to leave or they don't know, they're not aware of these alternatives or any of these sorts of things. Of course, it's going to be slow. And that is not necessarily a good thing. You know, I'm talking about this like, oh, well, you should just ignore it. No, I understand the concern, right? It feels bad if you spend a lot of time writing a, an anime gem log, right? Or, or something like this. You, you spend a lot of effort doing something uh, only for it to not reach anyone. You're basically just shouting into the void. It can feel annoying. It's hard to maintain a conversation on a website that doesn't get more than like one or two posts a day. It's hard to build a sense of community. And especially if you're a hikikomori like me, you know, you have all day to spend on the internet. And if you're only using places that are very slow, you're just going to run out of stuff to do and, and get bored and end up going back to the, the digital drug dealers again. Nothing wrong with a little bit of digital drugs as long as you're using responsibly. Now, I'll admit, I'm an addict, okay? Hi, my name's No Thank You and I'm an addict. I'm addicted to YouTube. It's true. I do my best to make sure that that addiction doesn't, you know, I use Invidious uh, wherever possible and Adblock and everything, but uh, at the end of the day, I'm not. there's nothing I can do can help or hinder Google as a company. They're propped up by, you know, they don't have to make money anymore. These platforms, they, they exist outside of capitalism. They exist in... Uh, in a sort of techno-feudalism, socialism for the rich, as it's been called, where they're propped up by investors who themselves are propped up by the government. Uh, they don't have to make money. Their, their stock price isn't tied to their actual value. Uh, you know, they just sort of exist as their, these sorts of um, neo, uh, neo-aristocratic class, I guess you could call them. Which makes, uh, you know, they're, they're sort of like... Yeah, they just sort of exist as this, like, neo-aristocratic class. Uh, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I, like, ultimately, we're just kind of fucked, and I will, I will never forgive the people who did this to us. Because let's not forget, like, I talked about this as if, like, this is all about these, uh, these, these tech giants and advertising corporations and me uh, media corporations... Uh, but that doesn't mean that the people, the normies who come in droves and do their biddings of uh, civilizing the, the natives and the savages aren't to blame as well. Those guys are also to blame, okay? And I'll never forgive them, right? These, these, these fuckers, <laughs> right? They're, they're willingly doing the bidding of this, uh, this terrible uh, sort of creature. We don't, we don't, we don't like that. Uh, so yeah, all I can really recommend is do your best to escape, do your best to get out of here wherever possible, Migrate to Gemini, migrate to uh, decentralized protocols and away from platforms and hope that one day uh, these places gain enough traction to 
uh, offer some form of respite. You know, I don't know if they'll ever take down the uh, the culture owners, the the cultural. Uh, I don't know what to call them, but these guys, you know, the the people who who make money by owning culture. These guys, I don't know if they'll ever gain enough traction to take them down, but at the very least, we can escape uh, some part of their control. Uh, you know, just on a sort of individual level as a, as a community on a small scale, but it's better than nothing. Uh, but no, I, I don't know. Well, what can we do? I don't know. Sorry, not a very satisfying answer. But aside from that, aside from leaving and escaping while you still can and saving yourself, nope, there's nothing much we can do.